Which champions am I ranking up for Variant 8 or I have earmarked in order to use in Variant 8? Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. And as a lot of you know, Variant 8 is indeed upon us. It will go live at the point of, well I don't know if this video going live, maybe it's the case that I'll get this video out by about 4.30pm, which leaves either 30 minutes or 1 hour and 30 minutes before the content is released. We're on daylight savings time at the moment, so it could be 10 a.m. PST time, or it could be a case that uh, it, it may be a little bit earlier. I don't know just exactly, but you know, look out for it to, to indeed drop. But what are some of the best champions to kind of like rank up? Yes, I've done a video on this, but what in particular am I ranking up and what limitations am I looking to see in this content to fit in different types of perspectives of champion coverage? I've put a little bit of write-up in the description down below if you want to check it out, and I will be following it right now. So as a lot of you know that follow the channel, I have done a spreadsheet on this, which will be a spreadsheet that the link will always be the same. If you've seen it from the previous two videos where I've mentioned this, it is a case that it will have the buffs that you use against the champion, champions that are quite good to kind of like take on the content with different types of interactions, whether it be immunities, whether it be certain things like uh, debuffs throwing that they can do, evade counters, you name it. Also, just like helpful information. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to ranking up champions or preparing champions for things like a new variant, my mantra is always try to follow a scheme of things, which is to make a well-rounded team of various different types of eventualities. And this will be evade counters, immunities to certain buffs, debuff shrugging, uh, strong debuff deliverers, so those that can do high amounts of debuff damage, be that uh, shock, be that bleed etc and also other things like power control over a various different type of classes because at the end of the day we can't really trust Kabam to go hey this is going to be great for mercenaries oh wait here's a problem most mercenaries are skill or mutants that's that's handy, isn't it, against what will be more than likely some class disadvantage that you will see down the line also coverage is important as i said now first of all you can check where your hashtag mercenary champions are on your uh, your roster by going to uh, mercenaries clicking on the tag and then boom there we go it pops up i've not got many at rank five or many past the rank two six star variety and that is just because well certain champions do better things for me so naturally i would go with the champions that best fit the build but i'm uh, not against the fact of getting champions up to rank four but then you can still look at what's your limitations is your limitation first on storage and rarity that could be something that maybe makes you want to either go down a route of acquisition of skill and mutant based champions which might get you some of those hashtag mercenaries also some of those those uh, pool characters like uh, deadpool x-force like as well venom pool like gold pool platinum pool which kabam have given opportunities to get gold pool more cases it's been easier to get a platinum pool so that may be the champion that you kind of go back to or kind of use as an option but now just before i get into like who i've got earmarked to use in variant 8 and also who i'm going to rank up i should make a point because there may be some that would question why i haven't included things when it comes to synergies and synergies can be used in variant 8 it does say that, uh, well, 90%, 95% less damage uh, can be done with them, but the fact is you bring in some of the other champions in order to bolster some of the mercenaries and pool-based champions. So why have I not mentioned them? And I think it just boils down to, it's better to consider that you have five options or five champions to use in this particular content. Yes, you can say in certain circumstances like Nebula with Guillotine 2099 Synergy can be really helpful on building power if the enemy is immune, um, or you're immune, sorry, to uh, to kind of things like shock, bleed, or, or poison. Black Widow Deadly Origin with Falcon creates a cruelty buff that can be quite powerful and potent. The same thing with Sabretooth with Sasquatch being able to build persistent building, doing persistent building, that is, with SP3 throwing. But Sabretooth with Spider-Man 2099 equals a passive regen, which can be very helpful helpful but at the same time you need to be focusing on maybe five different types of heroes and characters that you can use to take down enemies because you might say right well these are going to help for path clearing these are going to build some buffs in variant 8 and this is going to be able to take down the boss but i will admit there's plenty of options in order to do those uh, hashtag mercenary champions with 
uh, synergies bolstering them. You know, I'll give you like some examples that I'm personally going to be using. So I will be using Domino with Sabretooth because Regeneration Fury are 12% more effective. So that just means that I'm going to say that that improves the potency. There's also a few others as well. As I said, I'll probably use that Black Widow Deadly Origin with Falcon one. But if it looks like on the pass, it'd be more advantageous of me to bring uh, one champion that I, one or two champions, I go, okay, well, that's for the path clearing. And then the other three are for the boss. And if I make a mistake or say, uh, you know, the game absolutely screws me over, which, you know, at times it does when it comes to dropped inputs, connection, lag, battle, battle lag, judder and all that stuff, then I've got to really kind of think about that in order to, uh, you know, get through it. By the way, shout out to Ant May and uh, I think Mr. Slugberg for his amazing work. Link in the description because he does put the um, synergies in place. So you kind of like click on the champion, like Sabretooth, and then able to look at some of the different synergies associated, which can be really helpful in uh, preparing uh, your team to take on Variant 8. But I digress, let's get down to business on this stuff. As I said, Domino is going to be one of the main, main champions, the mean champion, I know you said, but it's like the mean main champion that I, I actually really like. Domino is an absolute incredible fighting force. If you've seen like some of the stuff that I've talked about, Bleeds, Incinerates, you know, there's sort of an evade counter with Unlucky. There's good dot damage, especially because mine, I think I've done to 200 signature. It's actually Domino is one of my favorite champions that I kind of think... Not that she's underrated now, because I think she's still rated. It's just the case that I don't see many people using her. Uh, critical bleeds are insane. There's armor breaks um, off the SP3. There's a good coverage right there. Massacre, where I've got, already got a rank 2, as you can see on screen. He's a great asset for me. Incinerate damage with a recent buff. He does a great deal more. Disorientate, so it's like there's there's disorient sorry, is on there, so that's good. And also I've got Sabertooth, which is persistent. I've got him as rank 4. I just don't know if I'm going to be taking him to rank 5. I just don't see any kind of like need at the moment, especially, you know, going through the 100%ing. Also, do expect Kabam to drop a sneaky little Iceman in that. Not to say they will and not to say they won't. It's just sometimes they do that and you're like, oh, I need a cold slash frostbite immune champion. It's like, well, he's your man. Also, gains buffs. Can be handy if there, for whatever reason, will be um, something that pops up. Now, there are, you know, helpful champion buffs as you go through, but we just don't know from the Deadpalooza variant 8 if Kabam are going to put loads of those Deadploids on those paths or not. I mean, you can check out this kind of grainy content here from the actual kind of like um, quest itself. And there's, um, yeah, there's there's kind of like, there's, there's very little Deadploids. So I don't know if this is something that's going to be more of a regular thing to put them on there in order to help out, help out with the cross fight. Which, if you haven't seen, uh, there is uh, there's info, especially on the spreadsheet. I've put all the kind of the various different ones you can get um, and what you can get back. There are some really good ones there. The power steel with the mystic deployed, it's great, but it's like, well, are you going to get that every single path that you go down in variant A? I don't think so. There's also some other stuff that's quite nice when it comes to like debuffs. There's a poison debuff and then there's poison vulnerability. Then that works double double. The, it's double the effect it's like double the kind of like thumbs up and that's great if there's things like incinerate immunity if there's other stuff as well incinerate vulnerability sorry i should say these vulnerabilities can be really helpful so those factor into some of the major champions i'm using they've got a good coverage but it's not completely perfect there are some champions i want to rank up there's three definites that have a good coverage and that first one has got to be venom pool okay so venom pool is a champion that gains buffs Handy if for whatever reason there is a, a buffed up, not to say that Kabam will, and not to say they won't. It's just one of these things where Kabam's track record and stuff that randomly kind of comes in could be a bit of an issue. So Venom Paul is going to be amongst that because he's able to get some of the different and various buffs. He is part of the All Pools champ, uh, champ section, which is permanent passive regeneration, 120% for their max power per second scaling with their power so you know regen is going to be completely on fire and you know it's going to just going to be um just going to be good options especially we're going into some of these buffs that are going to come up for the cross fight so that's one of the reasons as well as well as being able to be an evade counter for uh like a, a champions that are spider verse so that's kind of like gives a, a good option as well there's also some other things as well which um are, are going to be helpful so there's there's a lot on offer for Venom Paul as well as kind of like you know doing doing what he does. He's get, gain immunity to power drain, power burn, and shock effects, as well as armor break with the illogical DNA uh, while fighting tech champions. So yeah, that's again really helpful. 
there's just a lot on offer to use that champion for damage output and also cross fight um, and um, persistent as well with, with Venable. So that's uh, that's going to be an option there. I'll probably take it to rank 4 and awaken it and take it from there. There's also another champion that I will be definitely doing and that is Nebula. Nebula has recently been buffed as a lot of you know and forms the basis of a triple immunity. I currently have an unawakened version. So I don't know if I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go with the unawakened version to, to be honest and get her up to like a bit further. And it's debatable whether or not I want to kind of awaken. I don't think I will. I think I just rush with it and just look for shock debuff damage, double immunity, triple immunity, sorry, I should say, uh, as well as dealing with robots. And that is just going to be the most ideal there for damage output. Maybe I'll put the Proxima Midnight Synergy in. Who knows? In order to kind of like spark out some damage like really quickly and really early on. But those are two definites that I'm going to do. The other one is going to be Gwenpool. Now you've probably seen in the start point of this video, I have already started putting her up to uh, to rank 5. I've left her as a level up for the moment and that's just because I need to kind of just have a look, reassess my ISO. But that's what I'll be doing is kind of like, you know, putting this up uh, to rank 5 based on the amount of rotations that I can do with this champion with uh, with bleeds, also with SP2 for power um, control, and oh, also Nebula, SP1 power control. Very, very great. Like That's probably the, the, one of the best options for power control. So the coverage there, you know, what we just said in that moment is we've got a little bit of immunity, we've got a little bit of Spider-Verse um, kind of counters, we've got, yeah, power suppression, we've got bleeds, we've got shocks, we've got robot counters we've got a coverage over tech cosmic and that adds into the skill and mutant that i've got so there's definitely like four classes of operation that will be able to cover quite nicely some of the various content that could happen we just don't know but it's again looking at the process of like options for different things and further preparedness. One of the great things about those three chosen is I'm not wasting too much of my resource. And that's another key thing as well, is going like, oh God, I must kind of like rank up champions quickly. No, 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 no. Ranking up champions further down the line may be more advantageous of spend of tier two alpha and uh, tier five basic and other lower resources as well. As there are two other champions I probably want to put up as well, but I just don't want to make that kind of too rash decision on champions that I've got others covering certain things. But there are two things that I absolutely love for coverage, and that's the Vigilance buff and also the True Strike buff. That is why I may even consider taking my Rank 2 6-star Karnak, which I do have a gem for, and that's the other thing, thinking about your process if you're ranking up champions for this, is it worth doing this if you're not going to face some of the counters? So maybe going through with some of the some of the kind of fights and going, right, I guess I'll need this for this boss. Maybe this has this. So Hitmonkey has a Vigilance buff. He has that off of the back of his SP1, I want to say. Especially, uh, let's have a just quick look, just so I'm not going completely mad. Um, if his attack, oh, so this attack has Vigilance and cannot miss. So that's got that. Uh, so yeah, if this attack causes miss, or is a breakthrough block, refreshes Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage, Hitmonkey gains a Vigilance and Unblockable. So yeah, it it, it does, it's, it's there in some capacity, it's not fully there in that capacity, but still it's an option. But I have other options that do similar things. The only other thing that I'm kind of more interested in, I mean that's good to kind of like counter miss, but, and rotate around SP1, but the um, the other element of this is, uh, is going for Karnak. Now Karnak, is good at shrugging off debuff effects, especially those that are non-damaging. And having True Strike is a good counter to the likes of Auto Block, and also uh, it's good to counter Evade. So it can like get a double whammy right there of uh, of those. But as I said, they aren't my main focus. Like I will look into what the nodes are first. But one, as I said, I want to just put this video together just to help help people out with understanding process of ranking up champions. And whether or not, you know, certain options are the best way to go, not the right way to go, and that kind of stuff as well. So those are the champions I'm using or earmarking to use against the content. But do bear in mind that there could be something that comes up with these nodes, like, um, or these buffs, which could be helpful. I will be honest, there are some stuff that I don't really see any kind of great help for. It's nice to say that special attacks randomly inflict additional debuffs. That's nice, depending on the potency. And also, you know, you can phase 
We get a phase passive, miss attacks, I guess that's good. Poison debuffs, I guess that's good. And attack at permanently unblockable, permanently unblockable with the opponent is above a certain HP threshold. Again, okay. Grants power steal and the attacker's heavy special attacks. That I like. And then there's uh, grants all the attacker, attacker's champion. Uh, champions that can do poison debuffs. Okay, so there's all helpful stuff there. And especially for the Deadpools, will I be ranking up any Deadpool in particular? Will I be kind of like looking to take my three-star Deadpool into the fight? I don't think so. So that's just something again to kind of put you in perspective. Like I've got a three-star, um, I've got a three-star version. There we go. That's been the video. Expect a lot of content on Variant Eight dropping between now and tomorrow and the weekend. Thank you very much for supporting, and I will see you in the next video. But later on, I will be live streaming Variant Eight over on Twitch a little bit later on as well. And uh, yeah, see you all soon. Bye bye.